So hey, I'm Adam from Edge. I'm here today with Bill Caragunas. How you doing, Bill? Hi, Adam. How are you? Good. Now we've talked before. Last time we talked, you were doing performance stuff on server. I was. I was. That was several years ago it was now. A little while ago. <laughs> several years ago, yes. So tell me what you're doing now. I still do performance stuff on server, but I also do performance stuff on client. I'm the group program manager for um, uh, the Windows performance team, both okay. client and server, which, right. which means Windows 7 and Windows Server R2. Okay. So Windows 7 really is what I wanted to come and talk to you about today. Sure. We've got, we got a release candidate that's out now. Uh-huh. Um, tell me, you know, back up a little bit, you know, just kind of tell me what went into, you know, we talk, when you talk about Windows 7 and performance when you were building it in, when you were designing it in, tell me kind of what you guys went after. Well, I mean, you know, starting from the, the beginning, I mean, really it all started with the vision for the product uh-huh. uh, written several years ago now. Uh, and the vision had a number of pillars as part of it. And one of the key pillars for us was um, something which we called responsive and ready. Um, so when we approached performance for Windows 7, it was all about, it was along the same lines of you know, having the user in control, also being really responsive to what the user needs and what the user wants. Um, so you know, the, the performance investments that we made were along the lines of, um, you know, what are the changes we can make? What are the things we can improve that's gonna affect you know, hundreds of millions of people you know, that most people are gonna feel every day? And we're going to put um, a lot of effort and energy behind those things. So, for example, you know, opening your laptop, reconnecting to a wireless network, and having, uh, for example, your Outlook client reconnect to the Exchange server really quickly was a key scenario mm-hmm. and something we, we went through and invested in in a, in a very big way. Um, looking at things along the lines of memory footprint, uh, making sure there's a lot of headroom available in the system so that, so that applications have got more juice to run with. And also so that we can address more and more devices and a a wider range of uh, machines for Windows 7. Okay. Some of the things that we did. So tell me a little bit about, you mentioned memory footprint, which is Uh interesting to me. Tell me um, how it compares to what we've done in the past. Um, We, well, I think my team and me in particular went off and killed a lot of people in the process of (laughs) memory footprint. Uh, We essentially went through, we went through the operating system um, in a very sort of deep way. And I looked at this the other day, and I, and I looked at we we looked at something like 700 or so uh, changes we made in the name of re- reducing the memory footprint of Windows. Some of them were huge, but you know I know some of the program managers on my team. You know we had meetings with people where we were arguing over a couple of k of non-page pool memory, and non-page pool um, is essentially you know memory that's allocated as part of the kernel or drivers mm-hmm. um, that basically gets allocated once and lives for the session of the OS. You can't page that thing out because those memory pages need to be there in case the driver running it at a high um, uh, priority basically needs to go off and touch some code on those pages. Sure. So we would turn around and we would we did very extensive uh, review of the stuff that was in Windows and we looked at making sure that. Um, you know, if there was error, if there were areas that we could optimize, we we really looked very carefully at those, and we took a lot out of the system. And you know, this is probably the first time in Microsoft's history that an operating system has got a smaller runtime memory footprint than its predecessor. Um, and you know, I personally think it's pretty substantial in terms of um, how um, much smaller it is. Now, of course, your mileage will vary because you know every different machines run different sets of drivers and. Different third parties will put different code in there and allocate different things, sure. but um, you know, in general, um, you know, Windows 7 is doing pretty well. We're pretty happy with what we've done from a reducing memory standpoint. The other thing I must also mention too mm-hmm. is that we changed the, um, the the driver model as well for uh, for graphics. So WDDM version 1.1 mm-hmm. also allows us to save on memory because there's a whole bunch of buffers that we no longer need to allocate, which are part of the standard. So that for every window that you paint. You know, um, in the version 1.0 of those drivers, we had to actually have buffers for those windows, and now we've got the ability to save on pretty substantial chunks of memory. So that's another place we save on. So there's my little ramble cool. on memory. It's one of my personal little um, uh, the things I care a lot about, especially because it matters a lot on these guys as well. Netbooks, right? Yeah, and absolutely, is- absolutely. My favorite little friend. This is my this is my little friend that I carry everywhere. Yeah. People used to laugh at me when I used to take them to meetings, and I don't laugh anymore. <laughs> and that's and that's another interesting focus, right? Is now we've we've actually there's sort of this this opposite trend in, in processing power, and we're actually looking at some smaller machines now, and sure. you guys still have to run good there. 
Of course. Um, and the thing is, too, I mean, you know, we, we were well on the train of making changes. I mean, you know, the netbook wasn't the thing that made us decide to make a lot of these changes. And the memory footprint work started, you know, a long, long time before um, netbooks even were real in the marketplace. But, um, you know, we feel good about the fact that the investments and the approach we took um, made a lot of sense and ended up making sense in terms of where the market was going with some of these things. And we feel that, you know, we've got a pretty good result so far. Yeah. So how do you tell you've been successful? I mean, how, what, I guess what kind of changes have you guys made from, from beta to RC or how do you, how have you, how have you used the information since the beta came out a few months ago to improve performance? Um, uh, pretty, pretty deeply actually. Um, one of the things we built very, we rely on very heavily as part of the performance analysis work that we do is telemetry. So what happens with the beta build? Um, they report a lot of telemetry back to Microsoft, you know, and we built and instrumented a whole bunch of new things inside Windows 7 so that I can get down to the point of, you know, I've got a histogram now of, for example, the start menu open. So every time somebody running the beta build that's, got a, that's opted in mm -hmm. to the, uh, the customer experience improvement program mm -hmm. um, and you're running on the beta build, if you click on that start menu, there's a piece of telemetry that gets sent back to Microsoft eventually, which tells me how long it actually took from the point that you clicked on that start menu to the, the time it was actually rendered. Oh, cool. And I get, I get those histograms back. We get them back here at the, in the performance team. And we look to see you know, whether the various parts of the UI and the system are meeting their performance goals. And you know, if, we see, if we see concerning things, we drill into that telemetry and we try and understand what's going on. And that's really been one of the big things that we've been doing during post-beta to RC to ensure that um, you know, we don't have any surprises with the build. And we work through that telemetry, 